Welcome to your gold, silver, Bitcoin market update for the week ending 29th of January. Let's dive on in. I'm Miles Harris and this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy. What a week it's been, really has been quite something to observe and I think we're heading into another wild week again next week. So let's start by having a look at the uh, gold and silver prices so we can see that silver has performed enormously well this week. Meanwhile gold has uh, stalled around about that 1850 mark. And so just looking at the major macro indicators here, we can see the fiscal deficit has really been run up over the course of the last month. And we've discussed this in a number of videos where we can really expect to see this deficit continue to grow. Meanwhile, we've seen a slight rebound across the month uh, of the DXY index there, rising from 90.22 up to 90.52. And so while we can see that gold has broken out of that downtrend, we can see that it's also retested that level a number of times and each time of course increases the actual likelihood that it could actually go a little lower but meanwhile just look at what has taken place with silver here it's been an absolutely staggering battle this week and if we just close in here we can just see how the market has uh, tried to be smashed back down but then the buyers have come back in and uh, the redditors have really understood the potential for a short squeeze within silver and it's just going to be quite some battle this and so just looking at the gold silver ratio well we can now see that we're potentially at uh, a real breakout zone 68 has tended to be real resistance for silver to actually get through so if we break through that level i can imagine that silver could really move quite dramatically and surely gold would then have to follow and if we now just look at First Majestic, well, we can clearly see that it has broken through that downtrend that it's been in since uh, 20, around 2013, end of 2012 there. Uh, and this has been an absolutely huge move as the uh, Redditors have really got hold of the idea that there's a big short position on First Majestic. And it's somewhere around 22% of the actual float of uh, stock is short. So while that doesn't uh, compare well with GameStop, which was uh, around about 120% of the float, um, nonetheless, we can see that there has been a squeeze taking place. And that's seen the uh, stock almost hit uh, the $20 mark this week. And if we now just focus on the longer term prospects for silver, well, we can see that this Dow silver ratio, where the low of 20 was achieved back in 1980. If silver gets moving here, we really could see something quite dramatic unfold. And so as he points out in this next tweet, that headlines like uh, this attract larger money longs looking to gain easy profits on momentum higher. Uh, so is there this potential for uh, the Reddit investors to really drive up silver? Well, it certainly looks as though it's possible if they are going for physical metal. But according to the FT, and you'll love this, just look at this paragraph at the bottom where it says there is a misnomer here that banks are constantly running short positions, but from a price perspective, they are neutral. They have a long and a short that cancels each other out. It's a fool's errand. It's financial anarchy. Somebody's going to get hurt. I think they're desperate for silver not to move like this. And look what's happened on the SLV ETF here, where Bob Coleman points out that it's just added uh, 37 million shares to the trust today, 1,150 metric tons of buying in one day. It's absolutely huge, equivalent to 25% of all the registered inventory backing the Silver Comex future contracts. So for silver investors, this is all incredibly bullish and really does re reflect the possibility for something truly dramatic to take hold here. But just a little word of caution, because what we have seen this week is, of course, the elites come down very heavy handedly on those Robin Hood traders. And now some of them are filing class action lawsuits uh, against Robin Hood because they were stopped from actually trading their shares or they were even sold on their behalf. 
Meanwhile, there's all sorts of restrictions in place, which for instance, uh, where some trading platforms are not allowing you to actually purchase more than one stock. And First Majestic is on one of those lists. But data here from Citadel Securities, the hedge fund uh, that Ben Bernanke uh, was working with uh, and acts as a market maker for Robin Hood, suggests actually perhaps there's many others driving this trend because we can see that the retail flow uh, of uh, buys versus sales was net negative on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday this week. But what this could also be suggesting is that perhaps other hedge funds are beginning to front run Wall Street bets perhaps, and this could actually provide additional fuel to the silver fire. If real momentum is really developed on the silver price, it could end up becoming some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. But it's worth pointing out that we are taking on enormously powerful institutions here. And just remember, that's just what James Anderson suggested could actually take place. But please bear in mind, we are in for a very wild ride here. And so meanwhile, Treasury yields, well, across the month here, we can see that they've risen slightly. Uh, Meanwhile, WTI oil is up dramatically across the uh, month from December. If we just look at what's taking place when it comes to risk on and risk off, well, we've seen a big increase in the VIX index this week. And we can see that the SPX uh, is down 3.67% on the week. And this is really highlighting the prospect for markets to go risk off. So, you know, will we get a trigger event where we see further declines? Will there be a need for uh, the central bank and the plunge protection team to come in and intervene? Quite possibly. But what's really, really interesting about this is that while stocks have uh, gone down significantly here, we haven't seen that rebound in the so-called safe haven treasury bills. Now, I did mention this last week that will treasury bills continue to act as that safe haven? And this is something that Luke Groman points out here. Dow Jones Industrial Average down 600 points in two of the last three trading days and the safe haven and TLT ETF is down. It's a big potential signpost, he believes. And just look at the VIX index here, where we can see it's uh, reaching the highest levels that it's been at since uh, back at uh, the beginning uh, of November there. Meanwhile, on to Bitcoin. Well, across the last month, it's uh, it's up 23.5% and, and of, of course, hit that all-time high of uh, $42,000. Uh, did suggest we were going to see a big breakout after Elon Musk was uh, sent out a tweet or put it in his uh, headline about Bitcoin. Uh, but you know that has uh, subsequently uh, seen a retest of that downtrend there. But it's also to, interesting to note here that there's a sizable short position on Bitcoin of uh, around $1.6 billion by hedge funds. And that's interesting to note. So that could be another area uh, where the uh, Reddit predators uh, decide to target. Oh, and so what's it done to our portfolio that we set up the other day? Now, um, we can see the aggressive portfolio uh, is down 5.37%, but don't forget we've had those hefty premiums to pay on the uh, silver, particularly the silver, where that was purchased at 29.48 per coin. And then we had gold at 1,983. So we can see we're, we're down at around 5%. We got some good gains on our mid-tier miner there. And I also suggested that uh, we wanted to wait for a pullback before we bought into uh, CLLXF. And we did get that pullback. The stock actually pulled back to 260, but I'm gonna keep that on at $3. You know, this is long term, so let's see where it goes. And we can see we're down 2.33% there. Meanwhile, for the conservative portfolio, well, we can see we're down uh, 6.39%, but the volatility has been far, far less on this. Uh, So I think uh, we were down about 12, 13% at one point on the aggressive portfolio. Uh, Now, if you're interested in getting a copy of these, do make sure you sign up for my free monthly newsletter. I'm gonna get that sent out this week uh, to the subscribers that have uh, kindly signed up for that. 
And so while we've seen the Davos elite meeting online this week, uh, we've also seen the counter movement, a people's led movement, the greater reset taking place. And they've got a lot of videos that they've put up on their Odyssey channel, uh, which you can also find on Elberry's. It's also known under the greater reset. So that's well worth checking out for a more positive interpretation of the uh, future for mankind. And so it looks like we're in for a very, very choppy week ahead. Will Silver continue to make big moves? Well, not if the banks intervene. It's highly likely that they are going to fight back and really give it some firepower. They do not want silver and they do not want gold racing upwards. What's more, they need to curb this movement. So will they look to actually disband this group from Reddit? Well, it seems entirely plausible because once again, this is just highlighting all the inequalities of the economic system, the uh, fallacy of fiat currency, and how the system is just so rigged against uh, lower and middle income households. This is the great equaliser. On a week where I've been reading Spartacus to my son, uh, this was wonderful to watch. And uh, I really expect the fireworks to continue next week. But we've got to be careful out there. This is no market for uh, widows and orphans. So thanks so much for joining me. Do consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time.